All right, folks, moving right along, part two. I removed the rear panels of the original stand. Uh, real easy to do. Grab an eight millimeter socket with an impact gun, pop those right out. And then what we're gonna do next is hop around the back of the machine here and install the electrical thing. I, I fastened just loosely the six uh, screws right here. And then what you have to do now, hold this piece up and you just use a Sharpie to mark these three holes and we're gonna drill and tap them. So far, I'm really impressed. Tormach did a great job with the packaging and all the small fasteners and so forth, even including drills and taps uh, like we need to use right here for this panel. I, however, am going to cheat. I'm going to use my Greenlee drill, drill tap combos in my little DeWalt 18 volt driver. You're gonna see here, these are slicker and snot. And if you wanna buy them, there's a link in the video description. I've got those three screws loosely in the other side and you can see this will droop. The instructions don't mention it, but there's a split line right there. You can sort of see the crack of it. And I assume that I need, I'm just gonna bend that little tab and have it rest on the inside of that ledge, which will support this box. Next up is the control arm. The top right screw is two and a half inches down, two inches over. I actually needed an extra hand to get this first one drilled. And then after that, you can level it and we're gonna drill the next three here. I'll be right back. G got them all in. Uh, absent a future comment in this video, I would not come down the what the instructions say of two and a half inches, but rather higher by even an eighth of an inch. What happened was my bottom two screws intersected the shelf. Just a hair made it a little bit difficult to get the nuts on. I, I made it work, but I don't think there's any reason not to come down, say two and three eighths rather than two and a half. Double check and make sure you install this with the slots pointed away from the mill like so. Okay, screwing in the uh, support arm for the computer monitor and keyboard, putting the end cap on, and then just quickly transferring over that keyboard stand and the monitor. Tormach includes three cable clamp uh, parts we're gonna screw in here. Note the orientation of the holes. You want them uh, sort of pointed at a 90 degree away from the mill itself. I'm gonna wait though and install the actual cables a little bit later with the zip ties, but we'll put the clamps in for now. I took the old monitor arm off, but I left the bracket on and just put the pin back. I figured uh, it doesn't hurt anything there, and who knows if uh, it'll ever get used in the future. Rear left panel, or they call it the right in the book, goes on first, it's above the electrical controls. Use a socket driver with a uh, Phillips head to get this screw tightened right here. And then, and then I put a piece of tape on the top to keep this piece from bending back over and falling off until we get the next piece on. I also decided not to use the butyl tape right now. So I'm not advocating that you do the same, but two things for me. One, one, that stuff is so sticky and I wanna make sure everything fits and works so I can always add it later. Um, the other thing is I'm not running flood coolant, so there's a chance I don't even put it on, period. But again, I'm not advocating that for you. I'm just explaining how I'm doing this, at least right now in the video. More to come. Another part here where I got by okay on my own, but would have been really helpful to have an extra pair of hands not only to help stabilize this stuff, but you know, reaching around corners and getting screws fastened in and even helping with alignment. Um, and they could be screwing while you're uh, holding the piece up and holding the drills or passing bits along. Using the Greenlee drill taps here to add one of the holes. If you hold that bad stuff in the machine, what makes it so nice is a little bit of drilling, boom, tapping right through and back out. Moving right along, here's the back left panel with the square hole cut out. I'm gonna fasten that down and then do the left-hand side. Next step is you thread the two pieces of pipe together with the coupler and then you place them between the two spans. Then we're gonna tie a string across here because right now these uh, sides would easily open up and this pipe would drop out. Okay, I got them across on my own. Don't do that without help, folks. Uh, that, not fun. Get help, that one makes it much easier. Tie a string across and then you're good to go.
Okay, I put all the screws in the right side except the one up by the string. Same thing on the left side cover now. Okay, center cover first on the roof of the, of the enclosure. There's a confusing comment in the manual about uh, whether or not to install this if you have an auto a power draw bar or, or an auto tool changer. I think all that's mentioning is if you install one of those, either of those later, you have to remove the center cover while, while you do that install or something, but it goes in either way. Starting to look like a uh, real enclosure, folks. Uh, we can now remove this uh, string we put up and move on. Okay, the center cover here uh, is important because apparently it's what uh, sort of ties everything together, both the left and the right and the top. Two more pieces to install, back cover and then the back panel here, uh, both on the back side. I'm gonna put those in, be right back. Okay, doing the left side front tray here, it rests over the um, existing stand, and I started it with the screw right here. You finish screwing them in, and then there are pre-drilled holes in the sheet metal. Um, you then got a tap quarter 20 into the existing Tormox stand to fasten on the, the back side here. Okay, getting down to the nitty gritty. Put in this little center bracket piece here. The front right one is not threaded underneath. Don't worry about that, because you then fasten through both these to this angle bracket. I'm gonna later drill and tap these with the 1032, again, using the DeWalt 18 volt with the um, Greenlee drill tap chamfers. I'm gonna wait and do that because I wanna see how it affects the height here. You then stack the outside and the inside rail gib like so, and fasten the screws in here, same on the right side. I am intentionally putting the handle on the wrong side of the inside here because the left side of my machine is going to go right up against a wall. And putting the lights together, you just put these little hex standoffs on the acrylic covers, the wing nuts, and then the cans rest over top of the machine and it all sandwiches and fastens together. Obviously fasten the uh, light bulb in first and get that all ordered and then you can assemble the light as you see here. Next step, take the four door panels, put all the glass in. A couple of notes, um, you on, this is the actual moving door. Notice the flange, there's another one. Screws go on the outside here. I still gotta put the handles on. Pay attention when you put the glass in to make sure these two holes line up. You can't have the glass in backwards on those. Same thing on its mate on the other side. And the other, the other thing to note is the inside panels, which I think do not move, um, they are identical with the exception of one has three holes at the top, one has four holes at the top. Uh, I don't think that matters yet, but just so you, I was confused why they call different parts. And don't forget the screws at the top and bottom. And then likewise, you can see the orientation. Here's the flange, screw heads on the outside with the glass, and like so. Putting the rear doors on first, you can see it over here on the right and left. The instructions have one little mistake. They mentioned that all four doors, or one of the diagrams mentions that all four doors go in the rear rod. It's not true. These sort of non-movable doors that you see go on the rear rod and the movable doors go on the front rod. It's pretty obvious. Um, here's what's not obvious. The book mentions that you can slide the doors on by only removing the pipe. Oops. By only removing the pipe um, from one side and doing, I can't, we can't get the pipe to slip over the coupler. So we removed the coupler from the middle, put the doors on each side, and we're gonna put this back together. I gotta to do this offline though, because uh, it requires too many hands. All right, take a look at this. Doors close really nicely. They function really nicely. I really like how they feel. Um, they ride in the tracks well. They leveled, um, the leveling mechanism is actually great. It's the, um, it's, there's eight eye bolts, I'll show them to you, and it's a, it's a very simple system to adjust. I did do one trick though, which I'll show you in a second. 
Um, so let's take a look at that and then we'll sort of walk around the enclosure and then I'll give you some of my closing thoughts on the whole thing. Okay, pardon the uh, potentially disorienting view. We're looking right up at the top of the enclosure and you can see the spindle column right there. I added one thing, which is a quarter 20 threaded rod. I drilled a little hole in the top of the enclosure with the nut on over it and I added this little bracket. The rods were sagging a little bit and what happened was I was running out of travel to level the doors. Once I did that, boy, these doors were super easy to level. Like I mentioned, you just do use the, um, the eye hooks, which have a nut both above them. So, so put a nut um, above the eye hook and then the one below it that you see here. And then you just adjust those. I have the doors with um, about an eighth of an inch clearance, which is what the book says. And like I said, keeping that rod level with that bracket. Um, and I don't know, I don't know, maybe I missed something or maybe uh, that was an oversight or maybe um, Thormox can yell at me for doing that. I don't really care. It was an easy fix and I'm ready to get this machine back in place and cleaned up here. So um, let's give some final thoughts on this enclosure. Goes without saying, it looks great. Really does change the whole appearance, appearance of the machine. It's gonna take some getting used to. Uh, I obviously like it first and foremost for the cleanliness, keeping the chips inside. Um, to be determined if I swap to flood coolant. I haven't thought about that yet, but if you are running flood coolant, I'd get a higher PSI pump and really blast that stuff in there. The doors I already mentioned are great. Tormach, the, um, the friction, frictionless, you know, uh, nylon thrust bearing type things are great. The monitor stand really swings around nicely. The side doors are well thought out. Oh, I actually took my handle off there. Sorry, I was experimenting with something. But they lift up, they've got pre-drilled peg holes in there. You can peek around the back there and see, you know, all looks nice. The, um, you will need to purchase your own light bulbs for inside the um, enclosures, but those two are done very well. So all in all, look, this thing is really well designed. I'd, I'd almost say sometimes during the installation, it seems over-engineered, uh, but not in such a way that it would have been cheaper to make it, uh, you know, without that way, you know, having a few less fasteners here and there. And then when it comes to the price, you know, I've thought a lot about this. And here's my conclusion. And I talk about this in my video, how to quote CNC machining work, which is that ultimately, this is a product that's priced based on what it costs, not as what it's worth. There are a lot of pieces to this thing, and I have, <laughs> I don't know anything about sheet metal and volume, but folks, there's a lot of laser cut, bends, powder coats, alignment, drilled holes, tapped holes. There's just a lot to it. It's a lot of pa packaging, assembly, production. Um, it's frankly pain in the butt. I would hate to think about having made this thing myself. And if that's what you wanna do, I commend you, go for it. Uh, the question I often pose to people, you know, someone asks me, why didn't you build your own fourth axis instead of buying Tormox? Because I'm in the business of making money with my machine, not making the machine. It used to be fun to make machines, um, but I don't have the time to do that anymore. And I kind of miss that, to be honest with you. There was a, a uh, uh, you know, it was a romantic freedom to be able to just play with whatever you wanted. But now I've kind of got more responsibilities, which, like I said, sometimes is a bummer. But if you're a weekend warrior and you're in no rush, I would commend you. I will tell you that this thing was well thought out. There's a lot to it. Um, and I think what people get at when they don't like the price is not necessarily contesting what it's made of or, or the quality of the build, but rather they're just saying, and they're probably right, that adding this piece of equipment doesn't necessarily, this enclosure doesn't necessarily make your mill more profitable. And that's what's tough. You know, this isn't a fourth axis. It's not a, um, it's not a you know, software upgrade or machinery hardware up upgrade that is directly correlated to the, the machine's actual capability. So I understand that. Uh, and that's why for a lot of folks, a shower curtain's gonna run fine uh, type solution. But I gotta say, I'm really proud of this. I'm proud of my shop. It look, makes the machine look great. It can be a lot easier to clean with it. Um, I haven't really used it yet, obviously. This is more of a putting it together video. So for those of you who are interested, stay tuned. Uh, obviously, the rest of the videos to come will be with the machine in its enclosure and uh, I'll be sure to give you guys honest feedback about what I think. Almost forgot to mention, but actually very important, which is my recommendation for how to install this. It took me um, three different days of work, but, but by no means complete days, because I had a, a cut up schedule. 
here's how I would recommend doing it. Get a friend or helper. It will go a lot quicker. There's things where you really need four hands and there are things where one guy can be doing some silly little assembly stuff while the other guy's working on another part. Have a set of DeWalt 18 volt. I really like having the pair, the cordless uh, drill and the impact driver itself. I'll put their links uh, to Amazon. I do get a little cut back, doesn't cost you anything. For, for chasing taps, holes or drilling and tapping and so forth, very, very, very handy. And then a simple little bubble level for when you're leveling uh, the doors, um, standard metric and hex key, uh, metric and imperial hex keys and socket sets. And then I think the only thing you really need is the, like I said, the light bulbs for the enclosure. Um, I have no doubt that if you, especially if you watch the video uh, and you get obviously a little bit of a head start, um, that two guys can do this easily in a day. So that's my advice on how to go about it if you're looking to put one of these together. Thanks. Uh, anyways, uh, that's it for today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed the assembly here and happy to answer any questions you have or if there's things I missed and you guys want covered, shoot me an email or comment below. I appreciate the likes, the thumbs, the comments, and the shares. Take care. See you soon.